Hi, my name is Zigfried Emmy. I'm a nurse practitioner at McKee Hospital from Loveland, Colorado. My topic today is when vertigo is not benign. In other words, hence the infarct. Let's start with a case. 57-year-old male presents with two days, sudden onset, nausea, vomiting, unsteady gait, dizziness, and nystagmus. Has no medical or surgical history, takes no meds, doesn't smoke, drinks the occasional beer, no family history of heart attack, stroke, diabetes, or migraine headaches. Review of systems, as already stated, plus he recently had a sinus infection with a slight headache associated with that. Physical exam, cranial nerves 2 through 12 intact, finger to nose, normal, heel to shin, normal, extremities times 4, equal, bilateral strength 5 out of 5, heart, lungs, belly, benign. So, how are we going to treat him? Well, since he's been vomiting for two days, we went ahead and put an IV in him, gave him a bolus of normal saline, treated his symptoms with Phenergan, and went ahead and drew a CBC and a metabolic panel. Results? Well, the CBC and metabolic panel were essentially negative. Um, he felt better with the bolus of fluids, and the Phenergan gave him lots of relief from his uh, nausea and vomiting. So I repeated the neuro exam, essentially the same. I tried at this point to do a Dix Halpike. The results just did not were not convincing for me, so I went ahead and ordered a CT. So, the radiologist read the CT as negative. At this point, would anyone send this patient home? That was my plan. Discharge instructions in hand. I watched as he tried to walk out. If there had not been a wall between him and the floor, he'd have been flat on the floor. So at this point, we went ahead and ordered an MRI. You see on the left is a negative CT, as read by the radiologist, and on the right, you see an MRI diffusion weighted image showing a left cerebellar infarct. We also did an MRA, and it showed this young fella had a vertebral artery dissection. So, hence the infarct number one. Severe ataxia, get a picture. Sometimes you're unable to get these guys to walk for you, so in that case, what you can do is sit them up at the side of the bed, put their hands in their lap, if they are unable to stay upright without using their hands, that's considered severe truncal ataxia, and they also need a picture. Hence, infarct number two, you've already seen from my example. You can have a negative CT and a positive MRI, so don't rely on the CT. Chalela et al. in 2007 published a paper where they took 356 patients, all with strokes, they MRI them first and then CT them afterwards. The sensitivity of the MRI is the blue line. The sensitivity of the CT is the red line. Um, as far as hemorrhagic stroke goes, CT and MRI are pretty close to being the same with CT having a slight edge on MRI. Basically, if they have a stroke in the posterior fossa, you need an MRI. So, what's acute vestibular syndrome? That's exactly how that young fellow presented. Acute onset, nausea, vomiting, unsteady gait, dizziness, nystagmus. Our job as clinicians is to rule between central causes, which can kill them, and peripheral causes, which could be something benign like a migraine vertigo. So, Kata et al. in 2009 published a paper talking about a three-step bedside exam that any clinician can do in approximately one minute's time. These three steps are more sensitive for ischemic stroke in the setting of acute vestibular syndrome than an MRI. Those three steps are the head impulse, watching nystagmus, and test of skew. So my daughter here is demonstrating the head impulse test. Basically you sit across from the patient, you tell them to have their eyes focused on your nose, and you tell them you're going to move their head back and forth. You move their head back and forth and you look at their eyes. They should remain focused on your nose. Nystagmus. In peripheral causes of acute vestibular syndrome, nystagmus is always in the same direction. In the central causes, the patient looks to the left, nystagmus is to the left. The patient looks to the right, nystagmus is to the right. It changes direction with eccentric gaze. Also, vertical nystagmus is a really bad sign. Test of skew. Sit across from the patient, cover up one of their eyes, have them focus on something, uncover their eyes. 
if their pupil has to readjust, that's a positive test of skew. So how do we remember what are the positive results of the HINTS exam? Well, infarct. Impulse normal, fast phase alternating, remember the nystagmus changing direction with gaze, and refixation on cover test. So, some points to remember. Don't rely on the CT to rule out an ischemic stroke. Get a picture for severe ataxia and hints to infarct. One last point to leave you with. Never carry a coffin alone. Call for pallbearers. Your pallbearers are your consulting physician, your radiologist, and your neurologist. Here are my references. On the bottom, I posted a website, a link that's done by David Newman Toker. He's one of the original researchers on that HINTS exam and he is a, has a video here showing you exactly how that three-step bedside test should be done. Thank you very much.